For the first time in over one year, Bridgewater State University will be hosting sporting events. Welcome to this Bridgewater Now update, I'm John Luck. On Friday, March 12th, almost one year to the day games were called off, the MassCAX presidents announced that spring sports would have a season. Softball, lacrosse, baseball, track and field, and more will return to BSU starting this Saturday with BSU Baseball hosting Eastern Nazarene. Spectators won't be allowed at the games, but that didn't put a damper on the happiness of both players and coaches. Lacrosse head coach Erica Adams and her squad will be preparing for an 11-game season, but the coach told the Brockton Enterprise, quote, I think they recognize the importance of it and the opportunity that they have given that they didn't have it last year. They were all smiles, happy, excited, and just looking forward to our first contest, end quote. BSU Athletic Director Mary Beth Lamb has approached this upcoming altered season with cautious optimism. She tells the paper there's two wild cards in this season about being able to hopefully complete it, and that will be transportation. Each of the buses will be at 50% occupancy. The players will be double masked, and hopefully they will keep those masks on inside a bus. And then as all year long, their social lives will be a wild card. Hopefully they will take this seriously and just follow all the protocols so we can get through this season. And the athletic director also added that there are hopes to have a senior day with the seniors having two guests for an on-field ceremony. Updating what you just heard and proving that scheduling is going to be something to watch for, the lacrosse opener schedule at Western New England College was canceled. So with that move, that team will now have a 10-game season scheduled to start on March 26th at Worcester State. Taking a look at the COVID numbers from the state's weekly report and the numbers continue improving here in town. A two-week case count of 73 and a positivity percentage of 2.30%. Both of those numbers are down from last week and the trends are still falling. The two-week case count number has been down from the previous week every week since mid-January when the high total was 389. The positivity percentage trends also dip week by week down almost 12% from the height which was 14.05%. It was about a year ago that everything had changed with the pandemic and how we lived our everyday lives. For nursing home patients and staff members across the state and the country, this was a year that brought an emotional toll for many. This past Saturday night, the Common was the site of a candlelight vigil to honor the lives of nursing home patients that were lost due to COVID and also to recognize the efforts of the nursing home workers. Melinda Gripko Reyes works in nursing homes, and with other states commemorating a year unlike any other, she thought that Massachusetts should be one of the nearly 20 states to take part in remembrances. Well, Massachusetts, I think, like we are the top in our field in terms of medical, as far as I'm concerned. So we we have some of the best hospitals in the world and, and some of the best doctors and all of that. And so it was surprising that um, a state that's, you know, we're very conscious of issues. So when I saw that there was nothing there, I thought how would Massachusetts never, how would nobody have ever picked up on that? Um, So that's why I jumped on it. Massachusetts Congressman Stephen Lynch was in attendance this past Saturday night, and he hoped that a vigil like the one that was held could give a small bit of comfort for those who have dealt with loss over the past year. Because of the circumstances of their passing, we weren't able to, to come together and, and to grieve as a family and as a community, nor will we be able to, to give comfort to one another during very difficult times. So that's why we're here today, why we're here tonight, really to, to come together, to recognize the loss that we have sustained, but also to, to reach out to each other. You know, during the, the height of this pandemic, You weren't able to offer a a warm embrace or or a firm handshake in support of other families that were going through a very difficult time. So we're here tonight just to make up for that. And we'll have more from my conversation with Melinda coming up later on this month. Turning to our At Home series, and this week we have Jeff Ballas sharing his thoughts on the past year. And with all the negatives that has brought us, there have been some positives and things that we can take as things slowly start to return to the way they once were. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Fowler. Welcome to my all-inclusive staycation site. It's been my bubble for the past year, and what a year it's been, right? Uh, But slowly but surely, okay, maybe more slowly but surely, we are getting back to normal or closer to normal, and uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
Of course, we're going to remember those we've lost during this pandemic. Our thoughts and prayers certainly go out to them, their families, and their loved ones. But, you know, we're also going to cherish some of the things we've gained, like family game nights, Sunday dinners, and dinners in general. We've been able to slow things down a little bit this year, and I think that might be something that we cherish. Uh, We learned about this little thing called Zoom, which reconnected us to folks we haven't seen in years. And it brought many of us together, even though we may be miles apart. We got a free pass out of those awkward corporate parties, and it's now totally acceptable to send a cardboard cutout of yourself to any event you'd rather not attend. Well, as we do slowly, and I underscore slowly, get back to some normalcy this year, my hope is that we remember that it's okay to slow down once in a while. It's okay to allow some time and space for ourselves and for those we love and those we care about the most and when we are able to cherish those times together i think it's safe to say we have grown a new appreciation for being able to do the simple things stay safe and be kind to one another and cheers to brighter days ahead thanks jeff finally today we want to share an excerpt from an interview between brian barard and bridgewater rainham athletic director dan Bieron. Coach Bieron is in his final season of coaching the BR Trojans football team, and he's coaching in the spring, which could cause some problems for some coaches, but for other coaches, it could be an advantage heading into next season. Does the idea of spring football excite you, or do you do you rather have it in the fall? Oh, I think I think it I think it belongs in the fall. You know, I always said years ago that they should play baseball in the fall and football in the spring because you know we come out in the dead heat. Get, try to get kids in shape with equipment on and mm-hmm. by the time we're in shape it's cooler you know you could flip it uh and then baseball you know they go out in the cold weather and start throwing baseballs and hurt their arms or whatever let them play all summer but i mean i always say you know play your last baseball game on thanksgiving we can play the last football game on memorial day but that's never going to happen no mm. football belongs in the fall i like the idea of this you know maybe if, i don't think it'll ever happen uh like this could be like a spring practice you know like they do in other states and they do in college yeah. you know you could have the a little wedge season here when the kids could, you know, maybe limit it, you know, and, I, and I'm this way off topic here, but I'm thinking outside the box. It would, Go ahead. You know, it's, it's, it would, you know, I'm not doing this because I'm, you know, I'm not coming back this year, but I've talked to some other coaches who are really, you know, they don't have a lot of seniors and they're underclass. They're gearing this short season. They're getting ready for next year already, you know, mm. and I mean, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking at developing younger players for next year and, 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 you know, um, so, but I, it, it will never happen where they would allow, you know, spring, spring, you, you wouldn't get the games. You might be able to get practices, but hmm. again, again, going back to it, it's great to be out here, but I, no, it, it needs to go back to the fall. I mean, it's just, you know, some things that uh, I don't think you can mess around with, you know. Yeah. And there's so many adjustments that you have to make now during this pandemic. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you preparing your football team you know, the, the kids have to stay six feet apart. Your team boxes have been expanded. What have been some of the challenges for you preparing your team during this pandemic? Just those things you said, you know, you got to try to, you know, socially distance, try to keep them in small groups for instruction. You know, God forbid if someone gets COVID uh, and you don't do that and you're not organized, you could wipe out the entire team for a 10 day quarantine, you know? Um, so you, you, you have to be creative. Um, you know, and, and keep them socially distanced and they have their masks on. Then, then if someone does get it, you can say, hey, you know, we, we've, we have uh, taken all the steps and, and, you know, almost even position-wise, you get into groups and you, you don't have all your starters in one group because you could lose a whole linebacking core, a whole offensive line if you're not careful. So, um, but, uh, you know, that's probably the toughest thing. And, you know, just, uh, you know, Water breaks now. Everybody brings their own water. They they have to six feet apart, and you know it's again it's it's different. But the kids get used to it. And I, I think kids adapt much more easier than the adults. They always have, you know. And uh, it's like you know can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I'm an old dog, so it's hard. But these the kids are young dogs, young pups, and they can they can adjust a lot more easily than I can. And you can watch the full conversation with Coach Bieron and Brian Berard on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. It's also available on Channel 9 at the times that we have for you at the bottom of the screen. 
And don't forget, fans won't be allowed to watch the Trojans game versus Durfee this weekend in person, but BTV will have coverage of the game on TV and online at btvaccess.com. Just follow us on Facebook for the days and times that you can check out the action. Thanks for watching this update. I'm John Luck. Thank you.